have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. What's up, everybody? It's super freaking early again. Today is 3 4 2016. And basically, I'm just messing around with this thing. I basically want to try to just configure it and get it set up to make sure it's going to operate correctly before I go finishing the wiring completely. I want to double check that all the movements are going to work fine, uh, the placements of things and sensors are correct. Like, I just want to check everything before I go wiring it because I'm going to wire it in a way that's going to be really hard to manipulate later. So, let me show you what I've done. I've strapped the dial indicator on the end of this guy and it works really 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 well actually the Arduino is up here a side note and the ramps and everything else a side note when you're doing this when you're testing for the very first time make sure you set the motor controllers so that the motors really are on their very lowest limit that way if you crash them the motor just slips instead of smashing everything it's a good idea um, so basically I've got the software uh, pulled up here, The I'm using Marlin, um, I don't even know which version, so I think it's one point, I don't know, let's look. So I've got Marlin pulled up back here in the Arduino software and then I've got the uh, the actual printer face, printer face, and I've just connected, so we're going to go home. and then we're going to bring it down so let's just go we're just going to go basically until we touch I'm going to go up a few okay so we're going to get this somewhere in here. Now I'm manually configuring this guy so yeah basically what I want to check is the bed level and the limit switches so basically we're just going to move this around and it's vibrating because that roller on the end of my probe isn't very great so we're just going to move this thing around we're going to check it you can see that this side is high and that's because my bed can actually be adjusted. Okay, so we're going to get all this dialed in and then we'll be uh, going from there. So basically I'm going to be playing with mainly I'm going to be playing with these settings right here. So delta diagonal rods, the smooth rod offset, the delta end effector offset, the carriage offset and just playing with these settings until I get the best result. So basically if you can imagine taking, let me hone this and get it out of the way, if you can imagine um, there being a cone, alright, so take a cone similar to what you'd imagine these three points right here, alright, take a cone and pull it out right here, alright, so you pull the cone out right in the middle. If you can imagine the way that cone looks, all of these settings create this imaginary cone. So the bed will actually be high in the center and then low on the ends. Okay, now the bed needs to truly be level, okay, equal with the end stops up there on a measuring sense, so that you can start off with a truly flat bed. Because if the bed is unlevel, you're going to see an, an, a down slope the entire way. Even though it's going down, it should sort of stay level and then go down. That's still that cone. We're going to try to get rid of that cone shape. So I'll show you what I mean. Alright guys, so really quickly I'm going to run through these couple of points right here and show you exactly what's what. So I'm just going to verbally say what they are and then show you what they are. So the delta diagonal rod is this rod right here. Okay, that's the setting in the software. So the delta smooth rod offset is actually what's the, it's the delta smooth rod offset. So it's the point from the center to the actual railing, okay, like all the way out in the railing. So this point from zero to the center of this beam, 
All right, so the other thing is delta end effector offset. So that's the point from where these rods are attached to the point or the very center of all three of these points. All right, then you got the delta carriage offset, which is actually this point right here. From wherever you measured from the center here to here, okay, to the actual point here, so here to here, or wherever you measured that delta offset, the actual uh, smooth rod offset. Then the other one is, is the carriage offset. That's the one we just talked about, this one right here. Okay, so that's really all of them. Pretty simple. Just got to figure out what's what. Okay, so I'm not sure how clear this is going to be, but I've extremed this thing. I've made it to one whole side, and you can see where the dial is at. So I'm going to move it all the way across. And you can see it's sort of flat-lined. And it's bouncing around because it's vibrating so bad on the glass. And then you can see it drops off. I'm at the extreme maximum the other way. So what I'm going to try to do, actually, is try to align from this point to this point to this point, which is about there. And I'm going to take this measurement and try to set the same thing all the way on this axis. So it's at 0 .7, uh, 7, 2. So let's move it all the way onto this side. Alright, let's move this guy down to 7, 2. Okay, close enough. Now let's go back and see if it's the bed is level. Okay, so it went up. Now it's going back down. So what that tells me is that there's still a little bit of a cone shape right here. The other thing we can do is we can check it this way and do the exact same thing. So I'm just going to do this until I get the bed level and at least get all three of the outside points somewhat so the machine thinks it's level. I'm going to do that manually by adjusting those knobs on the bed. Okay, so I've set each point. So I'm just going to show you each point. Right now it's about 83 on that dial. Just for you, I'll turn it to zero so that you can get a, a real thing. I switched the tip out. Now it's a point tip. It works a little better. It's just jumping on the glass. See, we're basically at zero. See, we're basically at zero. So what happens is, when I go to center position, it raises. And when I go all the way past, it lowers. That means that the cone in the middle is basically pushed up. So I need to make some adjustments and attempt to get that cone in the right position. So let's give that a shot. Let's go the other way as well. And make sure it also drops. Make sure the bed truly is level. So yeah, the bed truly is level. See, outside of the window, outside of the point of the parallel from this beam to this beam over here, when you're outside of that window, it'll actually go the other way. So this is like a center point. This is the cone. This is below the cone. Same thing should happen if I go out here. I should actually go below the zero point. Oh, nailed the bottom over there. I'm outside my <laughs> maximum. Oh, no, I'm not. I just, I made some adjustments earlier and I wrecked it. Okay, we'll fix that. Reset. Alright guys, so the delta carriage offset and the smooth rod offset, these two work together to really get the true delta radius. So the thing about it is, is these two, you could adjust either one of these two to get the actual correct dimensions for that cone. Um, because 
if I add some on the delta radius, it changes everything. If I add some here, it changes the same amount. So those are the two settings I'm going to be playing with is this length measurement and the measurement from center to this length. Because if I subtract 5 here and I subtract 5 here, nothing, nothing really changes or shouldn't change. I could test that theory because it really truly is the center point. Those two work hand in hand to, to get your maximal calculations correct. All right, for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to show you what it looks like right now. Then I'm going to make an adjustment and show you what it looks like. So we're at zero right now. This is actually looks pretty good. So here we go. Going out to the outside, we went down just a little. Okay, going back to the other side. Also going down. All right, so we're going down. That means the cone in the middle is high. I'm just going to go left and right to make this demonstration easier. So now let me make an adjustment and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so you can do this stuff in the firmware, which I recommend doing after you do it this way. So through Serial, you can actually maybe get it focused. All right, through Serial, you can type in M666L, and it gives you this. So all of these are the offset adjustments and the radius offset correction. This is for geometry problems, delta radius, rod length, z height. So the, the radius is actually a couple of uh, combined things, which is how all of these other measurements calculate. That's the radius. Okay, so originally I thought you could adjust these individual parameters, but and maybe you can, but not through the M66 code. Apparently all you can do is adjust the radius, which is basically the same thing as adjusting these two points correspondingly. So what I did actually is adjusted this car carriage offset from 50 to 50, I'm sorry, from 56 to 55. And watch what happens to the radius. Right now it's 179. And then we'll also watch what happens to the actual indicator. All right, so I've downloaded that program. Now I'm going to do an M66L. And now you can see it changed by one millimeter, which is exactly what I changed over here. So now let's have a look at actually the dial indicator and see what it tells us. OK, so we've got it down here. Let's go ahead and check and see what it did. Right now it's at 0. Yeah. We want to go this way. All right, now we're way low, and then we're way low. Okay, so what I decided I'm going to do is just play with the delta radius, and then go back in the actual software and sort of change it there. So basically, you type in M666, and then D, and then the numbers. So right now it's at 180. We were at 179, which was better. So let's go to 178 uh, and just hit enter and then M666 space L and oh I messed that up completely. I put the wrong one in. It's okay though, we can fix that. Change D back to 343 and change R. I put D instead of R. R is 178. M666 space L. Oh, that's not 6. There we go. Okay, now we move this down, put that back. <laughs> and so let's take a look and see what we got on our dial indicator. Okay, so I am homing this between every time, so you guys know. So let's see what it looks like now. Pretty darn accurate. Pretty good across the board right there. Let's check left to right. Not too bad. Looks pretty good. OK, 
Okay, that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Okay, so I have one more thing I should tell you before I move on to the next thing I want to show you. And that is, when using Pronter Face, I've actually noticed that running it with the keys and manually moving it around is not as accurate as running it from an SD card. So to verify that I really do have a pretty good thing going on here, it's pretty well level or whatever, I'm actually going to draw up just a circle and just let it pretend like it's printing a circle. That way it can run on its own terms and see what happens. So just a side note, don't trust moving this manually for calibration. I've learned a long time ago that that does not work. At least it doesn't work in this one and with this software, uh, which is Marlin and Pronterface, the old version. Um, this is a pretty old version. It's three years old. I haven't updated it since. So, side note. All right, let's draw a circle and actually run this and see see what happens. All right, so I did get the graphical interface to work. It seems to work just fine while I'm operating it just by hand, but people tell me this isn't going to work well. It's going to jumble everything and make it slow and blah, blah, blah. So if that's true, we'll find out. I'm going to run this from the SD card right now. Okay, guys. Here we are. The screen is real dim. I don't know why. We're going to try printing from the SD. All right. Okay, so I'm going to start this thing, see what happens. Now, I've noticed that everything's really jumpy, and I think it is because of this graphical LCD. I understand what people are trying to say to me now. Thank you for the help, everyone. I was just confused on the difference of the LCDs, I think. So, I will. Um, start this now and give you a close-up of the actual indicator. Alright guys, so this right here is what I'm going to be trying to mock print. I'm not going to be printing anything because I have no extruder or anything like this. But I am printing from the SD card with the graphical LCD display so it's, it's a bit jumpy um, I think. So let's go ahead and We'll set this up and we'll let it run. Let's watch the dial indicator and see how close we are on calibration. All right, so here we go. Is that a hundred percent of speed? Let's see what it looks like. That's pretty impressive actually. That's that's not too bad. So it'll start heading towards the inside here in a second and we'll really get to see what it's what it looks like. And then I'll speed it up and just let it play. It's pretty quiet really. The most of the vibrations just in the uh, dial indicator there. Let's see how see how, see how we let's see how good we did from the center out. We should take off on this next round going to middle. There we go. So man, that's not bad. I could play with it more and try to get it more dialed in, but uh, that's pretty good. Between that 10 and 20 on that dial is um, the equivalent to point oh let's see okay so the equivalent is 200 uh, 254 microns 0.254 of a millimeter between that 10 and 2 so between this point and this point that 1 which is point Oh, one of an inch is equivalent to 0.254, which actually makes sense because 
millimeters to an inch. So, you know, that's not bad. That's print quality ready to go right there. Okay guys, so I removed the LCD completely. I only have the SD card reader enabled in the software, in the firmware I should say. And uh, it's still pretty jumpy. So I don't think it's the LCD causing some of the jumps, but it's it's more smooth around the outside now. So it's sort of a hit and miss thing. I got two problems, I think. When it goes around the outside, it does, it does appear to be a lot more smoother than it does whenever uh, I had the LCD enabled, that graphical LCD, so more testing, we'll see what happens. Alright guys, so it's pretty smooth now. Um, the entire time I've been working with it, it's been pretty jumpy, bouncy, and I just figured out what it really was. Pretty simple actually. Right there. The motor amperage was turned down so low that because the motor is only 200 steps those 16 steps in between according to the jumpers that you put on there you can do micro stepping so the 16 steps in between rely on how much current you can put into the motor otherwise they sort of jump towards the points of which they try to get to anyway so turning up the amperage I'm at an amp and a half sorry an amp uh, not quite an amp and a half and I could go a little bit more and that actually smoothed it up. So, good. Problem solved. So now what I need to do is put the LCD screen back on and just see if it also solves any issues. Not bad. Not bad. Now I can check the accuracy a little bit better too. Much better. Okay guys, so once again, now that I've fixed the motor controllers a little bit. Let's check the accuracy again. So here's one millimeter. Should be between those two black lines. It's pretty accurate. Alright, so just so you guys know, um, I later found out that one of my sprockets was actually loose on my motor. So some of this testing was not perfect due to that, which was kind of a weird thing I had to figure out. But it's uh, fair enough for this footage, so at least you guys can understand what I did and why. And also, it seems like the graphical LCD display, I did not realize this at the time, but they use a different library for the graphical interface, and they do not use this library in the Arduino uh, coding software. They don't use that for the 20-character um, four-line LCD. So I've been running a four-line 20 character LCD on my original Rostock since the beginning and I've never really had any issues with it so appreciate you guys pointing that out to me I uh, apologize for not uh, not uh, understanding what some of you were telling me but I get it now so alright moving on to the next thing we got lots of work to do I move on to repeater somewhere in here we'll see if that's next peace out leave me a comment bye